Hello and welcome to Guildhall. My name is Christina Strassfield and I'm the Museum Director and Chief Curator here at Guildhall Museum. We're delighted to welcome you here into the gallery, the Spiga Gallery, to see Hiroyuki Hamada's exhibition. Hiroyuki, I'm so excited to be here with you because your exhibition has gotten a tremendous response from the community. I am very grateful, thank you. <laughs> Hiroyuki, I just wanted to know first of all, when did you first realize that you were going to be an artist? Uh, well, I really started late. I, I didn't really grow up in a family uh, where art is an uh, uh, everyday thing. Uh, so um, uh, until I went to the uh, college, um, I really uh, didn't see uh, art as something you can pursue as uh, uh, an occupation. Where did you go to uh, college, Hiroyuki? I, well, I uh, came to the States uh, in uh, late 80s, and uh, the first place that we ended up, ended up was uh, uh, West Virginia. So um, I took uh, uh, classes uh, for English, and then I started to go to community college. So it was in the area. Um, then I went to uh, uh, get a master and all that, but uh, that's after I uh, got into uh, art. Initially, I was doing a psychology, and uh, uh, art classes were, uh, you know, I had to take those classes. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I met this uh, uh, teacher who was a working artist, and uh, as I saw him um, make things, I realized that uh, visual language is uh, a very strong thing. It's it completely uh, transcends uh, cultures and society and uh, uh, language and everything, and it just speaks to uh, your heart. Absolutely. And, right. Absolutely. So. Uh, Did you find there was any difference when um, I guess since you really felt that you became an artist here in the United States, but in your background um, before you came here? Did you have any? I really didn't didn't have any any ideas about that. Uh, there was one uh, artist uh, in my family members. I do remember uh, going to his place, uh, seeing sculptures and things. But that was a distant memory, and the, so there was uh, somebody. But uh, uh, the, I really didn't think of it as something I will be Pursuing doing. Do you usually consider yourself a sculptor or do you consider yourself just an artist doing a lot of different media? Uh, well, it, that's really a tricky question. I did start out doing two-dimensional things. Drawings um, was probably the first thing I really got into. Uh, uh, and also drawing is something I regularly do to have my connection with my hands, uh, uh, paper in front of me, just communicate. So it's a way to practice uh, my visual language and uh, 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 sort of the way to be in touch with uh, my uh, myself. That's expressing somehow. And so then I started to do paintings and uh, sculpture came after that. And, uh, but the way it happened is, was also sort of uh, intuitive. I wasn't really thinking about this is sculpture, this is drawing, this is paint, uh, sculptures. Um, so my paintings sort of started to uh, come out of the wall. I would do something with texture. I would do something with varied shaped canvases. And uh, then at some point, they had things taken out. And then at some point, they're freestanding. So they were sculptures. So, uh, but I, I do paint on the sculptures still. Um, uh, except for the one that I just did, that one uh, I used the uh, the surface material as a painting 
medium, I guess. Absolutely. So the one that recently came to Guild Hall mm -hmm. does have a painted surface on it, so it's quite different than the one that we have exhibited right behind us. Right. That that one uh, actually that one uh, the top part uh, does have sort of similar feel, but that one is uh, painted. I made this paint with uh, um, asphalt and resin and. Uh, uh, solvent, a uh, little bit of wax. So it was painted in layers and polished. Uh, so, but I, it, and it's all, it also has a sculptural element in it too. Um, the one that's behind us, um, right here, um, was created specifically for this exhibition. Right. And I know that normally you work on your sculptures for quite a long time, so you really were working double time to complete this for the process. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about how, you came, how this particular piece came about? Um, well, this was something I had in mind for a while. I was thinking about, I had the idea which starts from drawing. And uh, it, it was something I was cultivating in my mind. And, uh, but it was a, I, I, wanted, I wanted to have it a little bigger than the ones I've, been, I've done. And I, I, it was obvious that it was a little more complicated. So um, I guess I <laughs> um, was pro probably a little hesitant. And uh, then I heard about the plan, uh, this space. So, I thought it might be a good time to uh, uh, challenge uh, uh, doing it. Um, and uh, so as you said, I, I usually spend a few years uh, on a piece, but I usually have uh, multiple pieces. Uh, I usually have 10 to 15 pieces at once. But with this one, I, it, it, this was the only thing. And uh, so uh, yeah, I was really concentrated on the process. And, uh, uh, but I really didn't. Uh, if I thought it wasn't going to do, I, I was going to you know, put something else. Yeah, I really didn't want to have the deadline as a pressure to twist my mind. It's really hard to, uh, when, like when you, when you, you know, work on something for three years, and it's really hard to say that it sucks. You know, it's, you know, it, 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 you're biased. So, um, um, I really was careful about, about that. And, uh, but, it, but it, it was, uh, it went really well. It, it, it was sort of like, all the uh, ideas I had about the material and the size and uh, the process uh, idea, everything sort of came together, sort of uh, came out of my head in three, four months. It's so. amazing, because I do feel that the elements are completely assembled perfectly. I think the surface, the texture, the form, the way it, it comes off the wall, the way it integrates the viewer into its particular space, I think all of those things really work beautifully in the particular piece. Can you tell us about the way the drawings, uh, excuse me, right on the walls we have a number of prints, but you have to print. Can you tell me the difference between the process of approaching a print or a drawing and approaching a sculpture? Um. It, it's really intuitive. <laughs> I, I think everything uh, that happens in studio is very, very uh, intuitive. By intuitive, I mean uh, everything is connected. Um, you, you have elements, dynamics over here doing this or that, but you have other things within the piece uh, different dynamics over here, over there. So all those things are connected doing their own things. And uh, it's really hard to um, um, come to understand things as um, logical, straightforward um, equation. Mm -hmm. Um, so with the paintings, uh, I mean the drawings or prints, I, I usually just 
decides that uh, if they need uh, this space, uh, the, the main thing and the surrounding, and uh, if uh, the dynamic might be expressed uh, as the essence of the piece uh, within the other format, uh, I would tend to go for uh, uh, two-dimensional things. But it, with the sculptures, I, I, I rely on, obviously, I rely on the, uh, the presence of the, uh, the object. Mm -hmm. So um, I think when I have the idea in my drawings, uh, they kind of decide themselves, right, and I kind of just listen to it carefully and just go with the uh, direction. Go with the process, go with the inner section. I think each one of these that we're looking at on the walls could easily be a sculpture, but you have to have, it has to speak to you in that format and has to come across in that way to you. Right, right. I, I do think about those things too, but there are other ideas too, so. Um, just life is too short. It's just, absolutely, there's, there's, absolutely. There's so much you there's can so do. There's so much you can right. do. And the process right. is just amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about the piezography um, that these prints are done with? Because they have such a beautiful, rich texture to them. And it's something that I was not familiar with myself. So. Right. Well, the piezography is uh, uh, one of the uh, 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 black and white uh, printing. Uh, technique. Uh, it was developed by uh, 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 John Cohn, who was actually uh, uh, initially an engineer for Epson, and uh, he uh, went out to uh, develop his own uh, uh, set of ways to uh, do black and white uh, photography. And uh, so his method uh, uses uh, color printers, but he convert. Uh, the mechanism into uh, black and white uh, printing technique. So he uses his own uh, software and his uh, uh, own ways of uh, 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 setting the algorithm with the, uh, the printer so that uh, he can uh, use uh, seven, eight heads, uh, black uh, inks, uh, uh, to do what color printers would do. So it's uh, 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 one of the uh, very sophisticated uh, 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 black and white photography printing method. Everyone walked in and no one was sure whether they were actual drawings or they were actually prints. So again, the saturation and the gradation of the, of the blacks is just really extraordinary. I really uh, admire them tremendously. I think that when people walk into this room, they immediately felt that there was sort of a, a wonderful, calm sensibility. Um, and I love the way we installed the exhibition. And, and basically, because you said less is more, and I think having less, fewer pieces on really allows you to focus on each of the individual ones on themselves. So I think they really came together beautifully. Can you tell me a little bit about your philosophy about art in general and the way you see art transcending uh, going forward? Right. Well. Um, this is a really big topic, and uh, there are many ways to uh, uh, talk about this. But my main understanding uh, of art um, is that it is a way to explore uh, the edge of our society, uh, our social framework, as uh, um, collective beings. I mean, you know, I work in the studio all by myself, but I regard myself as uh, one of the members of the society, and I, I theorize uh, what I do is a reflection of uh, what we are uh, as a uh, social being. So uh, I think it is, uh, extremely important uh, uh, thing because it uh, lets you understand, uh, let us understand what it is that we are doing 
today uh, in the society, and it, it, it's a way to uh, uh, ask existential question of uh, what we are. Um, so, um, I think it's uh, it's a very important um, uh, piece of uh, uh, cultural activity uh, that should be uh, uh, preserved and encouraged uh, by the society so that we can have this way of uh, being uh, imaginative and creative. Uh, and those things are really important uh, important uh, ways of being. Uh, I think they're important standards, and I think today, in our society today, unfortunately, they're not as valued as they right. should be. And I, I think with our government also, they're not as valued as they should be. Right, I think it's a natural uh, trajectory uh, when the society uh, values and prioritize uh, accumulation of power and wealth, it is bound to have the society that's hierarchical. And uh, in order to keep it that way, uh, there's a pressure to suppress creativity and uh, uh, imaginative uh, ideas. So um, I think appreciating art is a way to kind of tap into uh, uh, that sort of realm of um, uh, uh, being human, uh, who is uh, who has the potential to live outside the, um, the framework, which might not be uh, humane, uh, uh, and that's I think that's uh, as you say, it's a very relevant uh, thing today. How does it feel to live in a community that supports the arts? I think that East Hampton and Guildhall especially has built itself as a regional art museum and really has welcomed the community on every level. But it's a very supportive artist community. Right. I, 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 um, uh, I think that's, that's definitely important and uh, I, I, um, uh, 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 it's important and uh, also it's a very difficult uh, uh, thing to do, I think, because it, it reflects the very structure of the society, uh, which is uh, um, um, very much stratified, uh, as you can see. And, um, um, and I, 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 I do hope that uh, 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 places like this uh, would be more willing to uh, incorporate local artists. Uh, and I, I'm really happy that you're showing uh, myself, and uh, Alice, and uh, 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 those artists who are from, he, from here, it, which is um, uh, very important, I think. It is, and that's what our Guildhall's mission is to collect and exhibit artists of the area. And we're right. delighted to be able to exhibit artists of the area from every different level. So we're really um, delighted. And we're delighted that LTV decided to come to Guildhall and to film today in the gallery um, so that we could have more in-depth conversations between such wonderful artists as yourself and the community at large. Thank you, LTV.